Hello, and welcome back to the next Media Studies revision video. This one will be focusing on how to answer question three in section A of paper one. You should by now have watched the previous videos in the series, so let's get going. In the same way as question one and two, the third question of paper one will ask you to analyze the same clip shown at the beginning of the exam, but this time it is worth 15 marks, which is the most marks available for a single question in this section. Oh. The question will focus on the full theoretical framework, media language, representation, audience and industries, and will test your ability to be able to analyse the clip in depth and apply your understanding of wider issues linked to the programme. Like question two, there is no set structure for this question, but here are some examples of questions to give you an idea of the style for question three. How far does the extract try to create a sense that it is portraying real life? How far does the extract try to create a sense that it is portraying modern Britain? How far does the extract challenge our expectations of age to reach diverse mass audiences? How far does the extract challenge traditional representations of gender in order to reach a 1960s television audience? Well. Do I pass now? With honours. So let's break down that last question a bit further. You will notice that the layout of this question is similar to the one in questions two. So we have the key term, how far, which tells us to form an opinion, i.e. Does it challenge traditional representations of gender or does it reinforce them? And again, it's very clear from the bullet point that we must do this. The other bullet point in the question is telling us we must give detailed examples from the extract to support our answer. And like in question two, you can use examples from all four areas of media language. What is different about question three is that we now have an asterisk next to the question. This is to tell you that this is an extended response question, meaning that you will be marked on the quality of your essay in terms of how well you develop a line of reasoning, i.e. an opinion, how relevant your answer is to the question, and how well you provide evidence for the points you make. Jordan fades back, swoosh, and that's the game! In question three, you must refer to the full theoretical framework in your answer. Now, in order to do this, you should break your response down into two sections, how and why. So for the how, you should consider the following. How does the media language construct representations that challenge or reinforce traditional representations of gender? And for the why, you should ask yourself, why do 1960s audiences need the extract to either challenge or reinforce traditional representations of gender? You also need to consider the industry. So why does the industry need the program to either challenge or reinforce traditional representations of gender? Before we start to analyze the clip, it's important for us to consider what traditional gender representations mean. In the 1960s, there were more rigid expectations of the way that men and women were supposed to behave, and this was reflected in the mass media. I can't type. I don't take dictation. I won't sharpen pencil. I can't file. My boss calls me indispensable. Miss Jones. Just a minute. Will you make a copy of this? Naturally. So men were shown to be dominant and in powerful positions of control. They were often portrayed as having strength and intelligence, and many representations showed them to be aggressive and unpredictable. They were certainly supposed to have their emotions in check. On the flip side, the traditional expectations of women were that they were delicate and weak, as well as feminine and sexualized for male pleasure. Women were unlikely to be in positions of power and instead were seen to be passive and submissive to male control and would likely be less educated. It also wasn't unusual for society to consider women as emotional and erratic. <laughs> Are you crying? No. Are you crying? Are you crying? <laughs> So now that we have an understanding of what the expectations of gender were in the 1960s, let's try to answer this question by using the Avengers and the timestamp is here. Remembering that this time we are looking for evidence to support our argument of whether or not it challenges traditional representations of gender in the 1960s. Our 
first clue can come from the mise-en-scene and the fact that our lead character John Steed is wearing a suit which is buttoned up in the middle and a bowler hat. These would have been associated with the traditional English gentleman which suggests that he is educated and in a position of power. Mrs. Peel. <laughs> The dialogue constructs a more traditional representation because John Steed calls out the name Mrs. Peel, which is how women would have been addressed in the 1960s as their marital status was used to define them, suggesting that their identity is constructed from their marriage to a man instead of who they are. The high angle camera work places him here in a position of power, which reinforces the expectation that men are dominant and in control. The soundtrack creates a sense of suspense and suggests an impending danger. The fact that this is a man facing this danger and not a woman suggests that men are brave and courageous and women should be protected by them. So it reinforces those traditional representations. This character's facial expressions changes from unnerving control to aggression, which are two traits that would have been expected for men to hold. The use of the set piece fight sequence between two male characters is another traditional representation suggesting that men are dominant, powerful and aggressive. In the 1960s it would have been highly unusual to see two women fighting or a man and a woman fighting against each other. <laughs> Steed's body language at the end of the fight sequence sees him regain his composure, suggesting that men are in control of their emotions. Emma Peel's facial expression here suggests that she is calm and composed, which goes against traditional representations where women are seen to be overly emotional and erratic. All this is supposed to go on the horse, you know. Must be very uncomfortable. It is. Steed's jokes with Peel suggest that he has the upper hand and is in a position of power. These jibes also suggest an underlying sexual tension between the two characters, which reinforces the expectation that women are there for the sexual pleasure of men. Never mind. And soon have you unsaddled. Oh. Girth. You have to cut down on the oats. The dialogue here makes a joke about Emma Peel's weight, which again reinforces traditional representations of women where the maintenance of their looks and body are their most important asset. Her tight-fitting leather costume, which helps to accentuate her curves, also reinforces this representation of women. The fact that Steed is untying Peel suggests that she needs rescuing, placing her in a position of weakness in comparison to the power that Steed holds. Who put you on such a tight rein, anyway? The vicar. The vicar? He's an imposter. So is Mark Brandon and Jill Manson. I found the real Mark Brandon in the schoolhouse. Ooh! And that's not all I found. The dialogue, which suggests that Peel has information that she has found out on her own, suggests that she is intelligent and just as valuable as Steed in helping to crack the case, which goes against, again, those traditional expectations of women, as she is a powerful and strong dominant lead. It is worth saying here that having two characters, one male and one female, as equal leads would have been highly unusual for this time period. So, after you've watched the clip, it's always a good idea to write a short sentence to remind yourself of what your judgement is. Based on my analysis, my opinion would be that although it does challenge traditional representations in some ways, on the whole, it still reinforces them. So I'd structure my response around this argument. Dr. Harris. Yes? Do you concur? Now, our analysis answers part of the question. The how. Next, we need to consider the why. This is where you need to refer to your wider understanding of audiences and industries related to the TV programs. At this point, it would be a good idea to pause the video and check the description because I have linked to the PowerPoints that cover all of the information you will need for this part. Revise over this information before we move on. Well, time to hit the books. Okay, so let's get started with audience. Why would a 1960s audience want the Avengers to challenge or reinforce traditional expectations of gender? Here are some things to consider in your answer. A strong female character that challenges traditional representations could attract a young female audience who are embracing change. Peel would be a representation that they could personally identify with. 
Steed would appeal to older generations who place emphasis on upholding traditional values of Britishness and patriarchy. A mix of traditional and subtle challenging representations would help to attract mass audiences, both young and old, male and female. You could also go further to discuss the wider context of the generation gap, which refers to the emerging youth culture who were pushing for social change but were up against the older generations who were resistant to that change. Overall, this is a programme that is made for entertainment and audiences would want to use it as a form of diversion from their day-to-day -day lives. Many audiences would be happy to embrace some changes to traditional representations, but overall would want to remain in their comfort zone in order to enjoy the programme. But what are you waiting for? I don't know, something amazing, I guess.